game that the Australian company made. Best experience with headphones or good speakers. I don't have either of those with me because you guys have to hear. So, yeah. Ah, it's loading. Ah. This is awkward. But yeah, Australians on the landings of Gallipoli, Gallipoli, Gallipoli. I don't know why I say Gallipoli, but Gallipoli. It, it'll, it'll cut. Oh, something happened. It went black. That's either a good scene or a good scene. Good thing or a bad thing. I'm guessing it's bad. God! Ah, we got something. That's a nice intro. That's very, that was a very expensive intro, I can tell you. It, it'll, it'll cut to when you don't have a black screen. Touch and drag to move forward and backward. I know Pinch how double to. Double tap to zoom. Hold and drag two fingers on the map to tilt your view. Use your finger and thumb to rotate. Tap on the compass to reset the view. Use the map in conjunction with the timeline on the left-hand side of the screen. Events appear at the times and locations where they actually occurred. <sighs> Tapping on an event icon in the map 
will open the event viewer. Touch aspects of the event description to listen to diaries, read profiles of soldiers and more. Discover other areas of the app through the menu. Black screen again? How dare you? Ah, Corporal Yes. No, no, you know, it's just gonna gotta do this. God damn. All right. It's 2 a.m. on this still, moonlit night, and Captain Faik is scanning the Aegean waters. He's been alerted to the presence of ships some kilometers from the coast. Weeks have passed since the British Navy's attack on the Dardanelles, and another attack on the peninsula is expected at any time. Faik is one of 80,000 Ottoman soldiers scattered across the Gallipoli Peninsula, ready to defend their homeland. He stands in front of a trench, within which a handful of his men await orders. Although he can gauge little detail about the ships, Baik telephones his commander and alerts him to their arrival. Soon he will move to higher ground to keep watch. Wow, this is uh, this is so much better than better than. Oh. It's just before 3 a.m., and the first wave of the ANZAC covering force is about to start its landing. 1,500 nervous young men from Western Australia, South Australia, and Queensland have already climbed down off battleships into landing boats. The landing boats are now towed behind steamboats, which in turn are being pulled toward shore by the battleships. The moon dips below the horizon, and the men know they'll have just 90 minutes to land under cover of darkness. Back on land, the Ottoman captain Faik also watches as the moon disappears, removing his ability to observe the distant silhouetted ships. He reports to headquarters his loss of vision, and sends a message to all shore platoons to be alert and on watch. Two and a half kilometers from shore, the steamboats cast off from the battleships and continue on to their specific landing sites. From south to north, the 9th, 10th, and 11th battalions edge closer to the shoreline, around 40 men crammed into each landing boat. In the still pitch black, the steamboats shift gradually to the north, and as a result, the landing boats begin to crab together. As they come to shore, the tow line of the 9th Battalion crosses behind the 10th Battalion boats, and the landing formation is lost. Around 4.15 a.m., as the landing boats cast off to row the final meters to the shoreline, a flash of sparks escapes from one of the steamboat funnels. Almost immediately, a beacon is lit on land, illuminating the scene. Nearly ashore, the first wave of the covering force is exposed. I couldn't read that. Pause if you couldn't read that either.
and the high ground known as Baby 700 for their attack on the heights. Further troops who've landed at Anzac Cove head south to try and capture the big guns at Kaba Tepe, which, with devastating effect, are firing on the second wave of landing boats. Meanwhile, men from the 11th Battalion have landed on the North Beach and worked their way up the Sphinx, a near vertical rock face to reach Russell's top. There they meet a small number of men from the 9th and 10th Battalions for the planned attempt to capture the heights. The Anzac assault is met with strong opposition from Captain Faik and his men, who are firing on them from their new position at Russell's top. Ottoman machine gunners at Fisherman's Hut also bear down on the Anzac advance. But despite determined resistance, by 8 a.m., parts of the Anzac position are well advanced. Soldiers have taken Faik's trench, and units led by Captain Tullock and Laylor attack the remains of the Ottoman 27th, who are forced back up to Baby 700. However, back on the 400 plateau, most Australians have been ordered to dig in. The main advance has stalled here under fire from the third ridge across the valley. Only isolated units are trying to move north and east. The lack of Anzac reinforcements will hamper any further progress northeastwards up the heights. Coastal landings are also stalled by the growing number of wounded, and many troops who do make sure scatter and lose direction. All the while, the Ottomans are desperately defending their positions with their remaining men and dwindling gunpower as they await urgently needed backup from Midos. Baby 
2700 against the advancing Anzacs. Having run out of ammunition, they are retreating from a small, advanced front of Anzac soldiers. But Kamal tells them to turn around and face the enemy with their bayonets fixed. The soldiers turn around and lie down in the scrub, which in turn leads to the Anzacs also taking cover. Now, Kamal dictates an order addressed to the 57th Regiment behind them that will one day be repeated around the world. I don't order you to attack. I order you to die. By the time we are dead, other units and commanders will have come to take our place. And with this command, the 57th Regiment will go down and defend Baby 700 for hours. It's 11 a.m. and the front line of fighting has advanced as far as it will for the remainder of the entire Gallipoli campaign. At Anzac Cove, the first New Zealanders begin landing and the crucial Indian mountain battery starts unloading its howitzers onto the beach. As these troops land, they're confronted by the dead and wounded men who litter the beaches. Up on the heights, at Baby 700, there is a fierce battle between Kamal's 57th Regiment and the Anzac Battalions as Tullock's men capture the hill. Over the next four hours, the Ottomans will fight hard to reclaim their ground, and Baby 700 will change hands five times throughout the day. Elsewhere, the Anzacs lose the upper hand as the Ottoman counterattack begins in earnest with the arrival of fresh regiments. The Ottoman forces have strong positions on the high ground from Fisherman's Hut in the north, at Chanuk Bear, and then down across the ridges to the south. Ottoman artillery power begins to take its toll as batteries fire from these high points with deadly results. Men everywhere are horrifically wounded by shrapnel. The Indian mountain battery pulls a lone gun as far as the 400 plateau and begins to return fire. But this causes such a retaliatory bombardment from the Ottomans that by 2.30, the Indians are forced to withdraw the gun to a safer, less effective position. around 10 p.m. The exhausted Anzacs have fought all day without nearing their objective. Morale is low. Hundreds of men are dead and thousands are wounded. Thousands more cannot be accounted for. All the while, the Ottoman defense remains strong with reinforcements expected by morning. Darkness has also brought rain, soaking the dead and wounded as they lie on the beach at Anzac Cove. Commanders are putting their case for evacuation to Anzac Commander General Birdwood. If we are to embark, it must be at once. They propose to him that their landing and attempts to take the peninsula Sir, have been a failure. The message. Birdwood is initially taken aback by the arguments of his officers. But as the discussion continues, the he agrees to represent their views to General Hamilton. There is likely to be a fiasco. New Zealand and Australian Division Commander General Godley is about to write an urgent note that Birdwood will sign. It will then be taken up to General Hamilton on board his battleship Queen Elizabeth. It requests immediate evacuation. It must be at once.
around midnight, and General Sir Ian Hamilton is meeting with his top brass. He has just been woken, and given the handwritten note sent from Beach HQ, requesting evacuation. Some of the men in the room support this action, but it is Admiral Thursby's opinion that it will take him at least two days to evacuate. After some debate, General Hamilton begins to dictate a response. Whilst he does, Commander Keyes receives news that an Australian submarine has slipped through enemy mines and sunk a ship on the other side of the peninsula. The news reinforces General Hamilton's decision, which will turn the course of events. He writes a message containing orders that will commit both Anzacs and Ottomans to eight months of futile, terrible fighting. In his PS, Hamilton offers the following advice to his men. You have got through the difficult business. Now all you have to do is dig, 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 until you are safe. <laughs> wow. The next eight months of digging proves to be a more difficult business than Hamilton had predicted. A long, fruitless struggle in the terrible conditions of trench warfare ensues, ensues for the trench and, and, and tenty and Ottoman soldiers. More than twelve more than one hundred and twelve thousand men on both sides were killed. 230 will be wounded with little change occurring to the front line of battle established on this first day learn about more learn about the campaign and the overview all right let's you know let's check it out first Empire out of the Great War. Well, the Ottoman Empire is not going anywhere. Expedition Force. Pause if I'm going too fast for you. So basically, this is just saying um what the plans were and then what actually happened okay Alright guys, that's it for me, um, it's been the 2 Pro game here, um, if you like this, um, subscribe, like, um, comment down below if you want to see more of some World War 1, and maybe even some World War 2 history lessons, um, I'll try to find some stuff, um, it might not be as good as this game, cause this game was absolutely, it's not even a game, it's basically just information. Just free information. This this game is free. It's not a game, but it the app is free. Um, I might be able to put a link down in the description below if you want to see basically a more um devised, like more specific overview of Galepi. Um. I'll try to put it in the description below. I am new to this YouTube thing, so uh, give me a break if it's not there. Um, but yeah, help a smaller, help a smaller YouTuber out. You know, come on. The least I can ask is just like. You know, at least like or comment. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.